tough question. Um, oh, look, I think uh, once it becomes a little bit of an obsession about how to make architecture because it's so complex and there's so much to control. So, and, and, and the way the tools that architects use to control that process that relies on numerous parties and a whole lot of people with different ambitions for the project, or in some cases no ambition for the project, is really the, the way you have to work with ideas and then turn them into, a, or give them some materiality. I suppose it's that process, that um, delivery process that I find most exciting, that, that making process. I still feel young. Um, <laughs> look, it, it is a, uh, it certainly is a young man's, young person's um, uh, profession. You need a lot of energy, uh, that's no doubt. And you need uh, a certain amount of tenacity. And I think uh, when you're younger, that tenacity is pretty strong. And as you get older, you replace some of that energy with skill. <laughs> so I, th I think um, the, and for an architect, you know, there's always that obsession that, or that idea that the next building is going to be better and you're going to have more control over it. And, you're going to use a slightly more, more uh, versatile idea, and, uh, and I think that's where you know what the work we've tried to do and the practice is. Uh, it's more or, like, more or less each project's related, but they're they're a development of one another. So that you know, we I always call it a family of buildings you're trying to make, um, and a particular approach to architecture, so that you don't have to reinvent yourself for every project. It would have to be how you communicate. Um, at the end of the day, you know, architects rely on enormous trust from clients to realise their ideas and their vision. And if you can't communicate what that is, um, I, I think it's a very difficult process. So one of the things that I emphasise the most in my studio is the ability to communicate well with clients and, and all the other stakeholders in the project, whether it be the builders, the tradespeople, the people who build it. Uh, uh, and the people who use it, if you don't bring them along on that journey, uh, it's very, very hard to deliver what it is you are trying to, to make. Mm, it could be a long answer. Uh, I suppose, I mean, uh, quiet architecture is, is, a, is a way I describe buildings where it's not immediately apparent that there's even been a designer involved. They're, they're, they're spaces and buildings which uh, are just at ease with what they're doing, whether that's, that's internally or externally. So I, I think um, you know, uh, Geary and Hardy are examples of people who see architecture as something more form formally based and uh, more object based rather than spatially. And I suppose the, the buildings that have the most profound impact on me uh, Buildings by people like Caesar and Khan, where there's a, you know, they're, they're very, they have an ambience about them that's uh, about the space and about a sense of the materials. You know, there's a respect, usually a respect for what the use is in the in the buildings, but also a respect for how they're made. Um, you know, for instance, you know, the, the 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 Sydney Opera House is a beautiful object, but it's also a building that's very carefully considered on many levels, and it's got a. Uh, I, I don't call it a loud building, but it's a very strong, iconic form. But because it's got integri integrity in terms of the way it's made, it's also got a quietness about it. It's, it's, it's that buildings that are unassuming to me are the most powerful. And I, I know that would be rarely a word used to describe the Opera House, but I think because it's such a... Um, it works on so many levels of detail and form and setting. Um, and it's a building largely about the way that it gets used and occupied. I think. That's the sort of attribute that I think is most important. And um, you know, that's, uh, that's not to say there's not a place for arch um, architecture that's um, formally interesting or well, not interesting, but um, uh, like over energetic, I would call. I think the, to me, I think it's a real skill to underplay what the building's doing so that the actual activities inside that building or around that building actually dominate. And I think that's a harder skill. It's a harder thing to deliver. And I think that, but they're they're the sort of buildings that are the most powerful.